what is up you guys welcome back to my channel if you guys are new to the channel i will definitely want to recommend any of you guys who are interested in nursing related topics cna related topics to subscribe to the channel because i'm consistently posting about cna to help any of you guys going through your nursing journey um just need help have any questions i'm right here with you and today's video obvious you clicked on it is a cna practice test now i promise most of my subscribers that i will be doing this and here it is today we're doing a practice test for the cna if you want to know where i'm getting these questions from pro Matrix, the link is down below but a couple of my subscribers said that the photos are a bit blurry so what I'm going to be doing is reading the questions to you guys, Barbatum, for the CNA practice test. And I studied this packet like it was the Holy Grail Bible and it helped me with the CNA practice, not the CNA practice, but it helped me with taking the Prometrics official CNA exam. I literally saw some questions on the exam from this test so this is universal for any year that you're studying it it could be 2020 it can be 2021 for those of you who's going to be taking your test coming up next year just go over this and you'll be set now the reason why you're not hearing siri's voice i was going to use siri voice but i feel like for you guys to register more and understanding these questions is by hearing an actual human speak and I'm a human so you're gonna hear my voice throughout this whole segment if that's okay with you guys anyway so what we're gonna do is just 10 questions per segment this has 50 questions as a whole but I do not want any of you guys to just sit down and listen to an hour audio of a bunch of questions i rather you guys go over 10 questions each section and know the answer off grip on the back of your hand then go through 50 questions and know the answer so i'm splitting this into five series for those of you who subscribe to the channel definitely be looking out for those videos if they're already out there i will also be linking them in the description towards the end there will be a link to that video too now let's just get right into the CNA practice test, test one. The first question asks, to soften the beard before shaving with a disposable razor, the nurse A should A, massage the beard area of the face gently, B, rub the beard in the direction of the hair growth, C, Hold a warm, wet washcloth against the face first. Or D, lather the face with soap instead of shaving cream. I'm going to give you guys a moment. I want you to try to guess which one of these seem more logical to do. Now you have to really think about it. Before softening the beard when you're shaving your residence with the razor you ask the nurse aide what are you going to do in this case it could be a beard for a male resident it could be pubes for any gender it could be shaving their legs armpits what would you do before you shave this applies to us personally what do we do before we shave now the answer is C, hold a warm wet washcloth against the face first. So let me tell you why you want to hold a warm wet washcloth. A wet soaked, not damped, but soaked wet washcloth warms your hair, your follicles. It softens all your hair follicles before you shave. So this is what you will do to your resident if you have to shave their beard. You will soak the beard with a wet washcloth. Just hold it against their face and their hair follicles will get softened. Now, if you think about it logically, it makes sense. Because before you shave, 
it might get a little TMI in here, but this is for educational purposes. Before you shave your pubes, for instance, you get in the shower and you just drench yourself in wall in water. Why do you drench yourself in water? You notice how when your body is underwater, when your hair is underwater, it's softer. So it makes it easier to shave. It doesn't give that rough, patchy, irritated type of feeling. So that's why you will want to get a wet, warm washcloth to put against their face. And that's why the answer is C. I do not want any of you guys to mistake the answer to be something like lather the face with soap instead of shaving cream. Some people look use soap based on your experience to shave, but it still wouldn't be lathering the face with soap nor shaving cream because you cannot lather the face with any type of product if the if the hair follicles are not soft yet to even start shaving. So D is canceled out. B says, rub the beard in a direction where the hair grows. Rubbing your your hair follicles is not going to soften the hair to prep it for shaving. So, B is canceled out. And massage the beard area of the face gently. A is canceled out because B and A is similar. Rubbing your hair follicles and massaging your hair follicles is the same thing. But it's not doing the trick to get the facial hair nice and soft. So holding a warm, moist washcloth against a resident's beard before shaving can help soften the facial hair. That is why the answer is C. Question number two. A nurse aide. Here's the charged nurse. Scream at a resident. The nurse aide goes to the resident to provide immediate protection of the resident. The nurse aide should A. Call the police immediately. B. Ask if the nurse is feeling stressed out about something. C. Report the situation to the charge nurse supervisor. Or D. Ask if any other stuff have ever observed this behavior. Now, I'm going to give you guys time to think which one do you think is best. And we're going to go over the questions as usual. I know you guys are waiting for me to give you the answer. But I really want you to think about this question. Because for those of you who is starting your CNA path to become a nurse, part of answering questions is critical thinking. In order to use your critical thinking, you actually have to start using that muscle. So take some time and see which one do you think is best. The answer is C. Report the situation to the charge nurse supervisor. Now, why is it C? You as a CNA, if you're witnessing a a, a staff, the charge nurse themselves, screaming at your patient, your client, the first thing you should do is report it to their supervisor. Because them as the charge nurse know that is elderly abuse by screaming at their patient or client. So if you're witnessing such a thing, report it. Report it immediately. So the answer is C. Report the situation to the charge nurse. It's not A. You do not need to call the police immediately. It's not needed. Uh, It's not B to ask the nurse if they're feeling stressed out because honestly, them as the nurse know they should not be putting their stress on the patient or the residents. If anything, to check who feelings is intact should be the residents. And it's not D, ask if any other staff have ever observed this behavior. You should not be going around and asking, do she do this often? Does he do this often to the resident? 
Because if you as a CNA know it's not the right thing that they're doing, they shouldn't be doing it at all. So you as the CNA should report to the charge nurse supervisor. In every healthcare field, there is somebody above somebody. So if you feel like the charge nurse is above, best believe they have a supervisor. And if the supervisor is the one disrespecting the resident, go to HR. There is always somebody above somebody in the healthcare field that would not allow such conduct to go on. So the answer is C. Question number three. A resident whose husband died a few years ago says, I have got to get dinner started. My husband will be home from work soon. What is the best way for the nurse A to respond? A, offer to walk with the resident to the activity apartment kitchen. B, remind the resident that the nurse that the nursing home prepares her meals. C, ask the resident about her husband's favorite dinner. D, explain gently that the resident husband died. Now, I want you guys to sit and think about this. If a resident is saying, I have to get dinner started for my husband, he'll be home soon. Most likely, most likely, the resident has dementia. If they are confused and you are aware that they are in a nursing home. So I'm going to give you some time to think, what is the best option you will do? This is a pretty tough question, but we're going over it. All right. The answer is C. Ask the resident about her husband's favorite dinner. Why is the answer C? This is the reason why the answer is C. When a resident is confused and makes comments that the nurse A knows are not true, there are many communication techniques that can be helpful. Correcting the resident is seldom helpful. The nurse A should try to pick up on any potential clues to help what the resident is possibly thinking about. In this example, the resident is thinking it's time of the day to get dinner started. Having dinner ready when her husband got home was important. Talking to the resident about her husband's favorite food is what she was planning of cooking allows the resident the opportunity to talk about what is on her mind. When a resident has dementia, what is important could change in a few minutes, but talking about cooking and other and her husband could be helpful. This kind of communication technique is known as validation therapy. While distracting a resident in something, an effective technique to change the resident's behavior, validation allows the nurse A to use clues from the resident to recognize what is important to the resident at the moment. Now, I read that straight from Prometrics printout. That is the reason why it's correct. And like I said, it's a reminder. If you guys want to look over this packet that we are doing right now, the link is down in the description. Let me break down basically what I explain or what I've read over. The resident has dementia. The answer is C because you have to ask about the resident husband's favorite food. When a resident has dementia, their topics can change from left to right to left to right. Now, it is helpful to tell them, you're in a nursing home, you're going to get dinner served to you, and your husband is not around. But that is not... You as a CNA, that is not the way to go about things. The resident is confused. So you understanding the resident more helps you more. Remember, you guys are CNAs. The more you understand your patient, the easier it is to take care of them. So 
if they're worried about they need to cook food for their husband, you know that they're valuing making dinner for their husband. Two key things, their husband and dinner. It could be, I need to cook food for my daughter. It could be, I need to cook food for my son. But in this case scenario, it's their husband and dinner. So you want to know more about their husband and the foods they eat. It will help keep their mind on topic on what it is that they're worrying about. If they're so anxious, your job as the CNA is to calm their nerves down. That is why the answer is C, to just ask the resident about her husband's favorite food. Now, if there's any other dementia questions in the future where a resident is worried, remember to just go, your go-to is to whatever they're concerned about, try to navigate through their concerns without belittling their situation by not being aware of where they are because they have dementia dementia is a disease that is inevitable to some people you cannot determine if you get dementia in the future you can you i don't know like dementia you just don't know if you're going to get it in the future some people get it and some people don't even if it's not in your your family history you still can have a chance of getting it so you just have to work with residents that have dementia. Question number five. After reporting the observation of a red area on the resident's hip, the nurse aide should expect that the blank A resident will be placed in short term bed rest. B Area will be covered with a protective dressing. C. Area will need frequent massage with a moisturized lotion. D. Residents should be positioned to avoid pressure in the area. Now I'm going to give you guys time to think about it. When you get in the field... This answer will make more and more and more sense. So I'm going to give you a little time. Okay. Now we're about to go over it. The answer is D. Residents should be positioned to avoid the pressure of the area. Now, here is why you should be positioned in a separate area. Remaining in one position creates pressure on bony areas. The pressure restricts blood flow to the tissue, which causes injury to the tissue, which can result in skin breakdown. The redness suggests injury to the tissue. So the redness is just showing that the patient has injury towards that tissue that's irritated. To try to prevent this from progressing in an area, in an open area, is very important that the resident is positioned to avoid the pressure on that area. The staff will also have to ensure the resident is positioned frequently. Keyword, frequently. There are many factors that increase the resident's risk for skin breakdown. Residents who are not able to change their own position are at higher risk. Poor nutrition, dehydration, and incontinence also increase the risk of skin breakdown. And for those of you who do not know what incontinence mean, means they are not able to get up and use the bathroom and have a bowel movement by themselves or be able to pee by themselves. An important responsibility for the nurse aide is to closely observe the resident's skin at any opportunity, especially residents who are at risk for skin breakdown, such as those who are in mobile or incontinent, report any changes to the nurse promptly. Now, the reason why the answer is D to 
move them from the pressure area is just as I read over through the Prometric Steady Guide packet is that if you have pain, say if you sprained your ankle, you're not going to put too much pressure on that area that is bruised or irritated. If you have a bruise on your right shoulder, you're not going to sleep on your right shoulder because it's bruised and irritated. Now, with these patients that you guys are taking care of, it is highly important that if they have a mark that is irritated on their skin, because elderly people are prone to get bruises more than younger people, it's important that you do not put pressure on their skin. Don't do it because their skin can be prone to skin breakdown. Now, skin breakdown can be caused by incontinence, lack of high, um, dehydration. It could be lack of nutrition. It could be lack of just taking care of them when they're getting changed for, you know, just getting changed for whatever type of time you have to change them. But in this case scenario, they have a bruise. You reported it. The next step you should do is make sure that they are not laying on that bruised area. If their bruises on their behind, you turn them to the stomach. If their bruises on their side, you give them to the opposite side. That is why the answer is D. Question number five. When going to take routine vitals, the nurse aide discovers that a minister is praying with the resident. The nurse aide should A. Ask how long the minister plans to visit. B. Explain politely that it's time to take vital signs. C. Check if the resident is praying before interrupting. Or D. Wait to take the vital signs after the minister have left. Okay. I gave you guys some time. And let me give you the answer. The answer is D. Wait to take the vital signs after the minister has left. And here's the reason why you should wait. As a nursing aide, you should know the rights of your residents. And part of the rights of your residents is they have the rights of privacy and they have the rights of visitors. If they need privacy to pray with the minister, a minister could be like a pastor, any religious figure. You have to wait until they are completely done praying before you interrupt them for vital signs. As important it is to get their vital signs, you have to respect their rights, you as a nursing aide. Even if it's not a pastor or a minister in their room and they're praying, it could be a family member, it could be their daughter coming by and they're praying. If they need their privacy and you need to do a task, you wait until they're completely done getting their privacy so you can come in and assist with their tasks. Even if they're not praying, say they're just having a private conversation with their family, let them have that private conversation and then give them the vital signs. Then do the task that's needed. But it is best you wait. This is just part of the rights of the residents and vice versa. If you was in the hospital and you're being, you and your pastor are praying or you and your family are having a private conversation, you know that you have the rights of privacy as a patient. So the nurse, nursing assistant, doctor have to wait a moment. So it goes in full circle. Question number six. A resident who is in isolation needs the temperature taken several times a day. Where is the appropriate place for the thermometer to be kept? A, at the nursing station. B, on the isolation cart outside the residence room. C, in the dirty 
utilities room or D, in the residence room. Now, I'm going to give you guys time. And this one is really important, especially with the pandemic we're in with COVID. Say if you have a resident that has COVID, that is COVID positive, and they need to get their temperature taken. Where do you place the thermometer? Okay, the yeah. answer is D. And here's why. Items that are used for a resident that is put in isolation should not be outside at any cost, any means. So, all of these locations are saying outside. At the nurse's station, number A, no, that's outside. We cannot place the thermometer there. On the isolation chart, cart outside the resident's room, it may seem like an answer you will want to choose because it says isolation's cart, but it is outside. Don't forget, on the isolation cart outside, it says outside the resident's room. No. In the dirty linen room, the dirty linen room is placed outside. For those of you who are working in the field or going to be working in the field, that is placed outside. You will keep that th thermometer D, in the residence room. What goes in there stays in there. Okay? So that is why the answer is D. Now, we are on question 7. A resident says, I'm not going to eat this food. It's poison. What is the best response by the nurse aide? Is it A, offer to taste all the food first to provide it's not poisoned, to prove that it's not poisoned. B, report to the charge nurse that the resident is acting crazy. C, ask if there is something else the resident would like to eat. Or D, leave the resident alone because the resident will eat when they're hungry enough. Now, let me give you time. All right, the answer is C. Ask if there's something else that the resident would like to eat. If you have a resident that is becoming irritated, annoyed, aggravated by what is being served to them, arguing with them is not going to help you have a conclusion. You will come across residents who don't want to eat that food. The best thing you can do is ask what is best for them to eat. What 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 would you like added to the menu? What would you like taken off the menu? What would you like me to call dietary aid to do to to fix for you? That's the best thing to do. If they don't want it, if they don't like it, you work with them. Don't argue with them. Don't let them be. You work with them. Work with them and see what else would they like to eat. That is why the answer is C. Now we are on question eight. All right. A nurse aide who is new to the unit observed two residents going to the room and close the door. The nurse aide suspects that the two residents are going to have sex. What should the nurse aide do? A, check on the residents every few times, few minutes. B, report the resident behavior to the ch charge nurse. C, ask the nurse if the resident should be medicated. D, tell the resident that sex is not allowed in the nursing home. Let me give you some time. All right, now, the answer is B, 
to report the resident behavior to the charge nurse. And here's why. You are a new CNA. You do not know these residents. You don't know their ins and outs. You don't know who has dementia. You don't know if this is their regular behavior. Reporting to the charge nurse is not always a negative thing. Anytime you report something in the nursing field, you as a CNA, is to save your behind. Remember that. Don't think reporting is a bad thing. Now, it's, it's human nature to indulge in sexual activities such as that regardless what age. It's human nature. But due to some residents, they have dementia, they are confused, they don't know. And some of them have limitations. It could be physical limitations. They might not know or be able to consent to such actions. So the best thing to do as a new resident is just to report it to see if it's normal, if that is what they do. If it's not, the charge, no, the charge nurse will know and they will get it situated. So that is the best thing you should do. Question number nine. A resident wears a hand splint. Which observation should the nurse aid report to the to the nurse immediately? A. The resident's fingers are cold and blue in color. B. The splint was removed as scheduled in the care plan. C. The resident asks to have the splint removed for a few minutes. Or D, the resident asks the nurse A to position the arm with the split. Let me give you some time. Okay. Now the answer to this question is A. The resident fingers are cold and blue in color. That is the most important thing to report to the charge nurse or the head nurse, your supervisor. Because when you're applying a splinter on a resident or anything that's in their care plan that has to do with their casting or uh, padding around them, if there's something unusual going on, you report that. So if you're applying the splint and it's not applied correctly and it's adding more pressure, and you're noticing their hands are turning blue, their hands are numb, their hands are stiff. That is something highly important for you to go to the charge your nurse. Your skin is changing color is always a sign that something is happening to your body that should not be happening in the moment. So cold blue hands, you go straight to the charge nurse, your supervisor, to go ahead and report. Now we are on our last and final question. I just want to thank most of you guys who are still with me studying. You guys are going to do great. You guys are going to do phenomenal on your test. Even if you took the test and you failed it, keep taking it, keep going, keep trying. Because you can, as cliche it might sound, you can do anything you put your mind to it. Have confidence in yourself. Be your own cheerleader. Drink plenty of water and you will be set so now let's go on question 10 the last one question 10 which of the following is a right of nurse nursing home residents let me repeat that question 10 which of the following is a right of nursing home residents a to select the staff that will provide their care b to have designated smoking areas in the facility. C. To make decisions about their care and treatment. D. To have activities offered throughout the day and evening shift. All right. Now the answer to this one, the residents' rights, is C. To make decisions about their care and treatment. Part of a nursing home resident's right is they have the right to participate in their care plan. They have the right to make the decisions of how they want to go about their care plan. So residents have the rights 
to make decisions about their care plan. Yes, the nurses might create the care plan, but residents can put their input if it doesn't work out or that's not the way they like to go about it. So just remind yourself that that is part of the residents' rights. And that is all of the 10 questions. I just want to, you know, clap and give you guys a little pat on the back for listening to this audio. Please keep a lookout for the part two practice test. We will be going over soon. And those of you who enjoy this, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing more and more content like this and encourage me to keep going forth. And I love helping people in general, rather it be in a healthcare field or even on YouTube. Any way to help, make sure you leave comments below. I am able to answer any comments there is. If I'm not, I will let you know. But leave some comments of things you want to talk about, hear about, see about, and let's have a conversation down below. I definitely want you guys to feel confident and feel good about taking your written exam. I know due to this epidemic, this whole COVID-19 really messed up everybody's schedule or their goals, but don't let a virus stop you from achieving your goals. You have to have that tunnel vision and you will be able to achieve everything everything that you want anything that you manifest and you have to tell yourself you can do it because words come intuition like it comes in existence so if you say you can you will and it will get done so i just want to thank you guys again i really do appreciate all the love and support that you guys give me while i create these videos i'll definitely be seeing you guys in my next video